This is our second in a series of four sessions on the necessity. That's what we looked at last time. This time, the nature. Next time, the gift. And then the ground of loving Christ. How necessary is it to love Christ. And today, in this session, what are we talking about when we say love Christ? And then, in what sense is it decisively a gift? And what's the ground of it that we are conscious of that really awakens love for Him in us? Father, I ask that as we look today at the nature of what it is to love your Son and to love you in Him, you would make it plain and use the word to awaken it in us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at four passages briefly. Matthew 10, 37. These are the words of Jesus. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, this is a comparison of the love of Christ, love toward Christ, with love towards mother and father and son and daughter. So it's not talking about the, the love that consists in um, obedience to and authority. You don't, you don't think of your love to your son as an obedience to an authority. This is love of uh, affection, love of counting something, feeling something as precious or valuable. We could say, we could say this love is valuing love, treasuring love. So this is not love that is a serving of someone because they have a claim on you because of their authority, but rather this is the love of someone because you are, are valuing them as very dear to you, very precious to you. So that's, that's what I'm getting at first, is that to love the nature of loving Christ is to value him, treasure him, count him as precious and dear to you, more valuable to you than father or mother or son or daughter. However, lots of people go to this passage in John 14 to stress obedience as the nature of love. See if you agree. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. I think it is an overly hasty judgment to go quickly from these words to love equals obedience to commands. It's not quite like that, is it? If you love me, then the result of this love, the result of this love will be keeping my commandments. It's not that they're the same. It's not equal. No. It's result. Somehow or other, growing out of this love is commandment keeping. Same applies to each of these as well. However, I, I want to be fair and say, surely in the mind of Jesus, this is part of loving the way I would like to talk of it is 
that the the essence of loving is something different than the doing of what Jesus says. If Jesus says, go to the other side of the street and you go, then that obedience can be spoken of as an expression of your love to him. But the love is first. So what is the essence? What's the, what's the heart of it? And that's not spoken here. Here, it's just laid down. If you have it, if you have this love, you're going to be an obedient person to him. So let's go to 1 John 5, 1 to 5, for an amazing analysis of what this love is and how it relates to obedience. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, has been born of God. So the evidence that you have experienced the new birth is that you believe that Jesus is the Christ. Because of that tense verb right there. When you're born of God, the result is you believe, and so everyone who believes has been born of God. A miracle has happened through the new birth that makes you a believer in Jesus. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him, Christians. If you love God, you'll love Christians. By this we know that we love the children of God. How do you know you love the the children of God? Because you love God. That flips it around. We usually think, how can you know you love God? God? And the answer is, well, because you love the children of God. And here he's saying, how can you know you love the children of God? And he says, because you love God. Hmm. So what is the love of God? He says, love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God. Okay, now we're getting close to our answer. What's he going to say? This is the love of God. Your loving God is what? That we keep his commandments. Sounds a lot like John 14, 15 to 24 that we just saw, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. We keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. That's what it is to love God to keep his commandments, but to keep them in a way that experiences them not as a burden, but as a a blessing. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. What's the basis of this non-burdensome experience of keeping commandments of God? Here's the the ground, right? We We know this word. Because everyone who has been born of God, referring back up here to this new birth, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. So, since the new birth conquers worldly impulses and worldly um, aspects of our fallen nature, therefore we experience commandment keeping as not burdensome. There's the key. The new birth changes us so profoundly in the way we relate to God within, within our hearts, that all the powers of the world that had turned those commandments into such things that we despised and rebelled against and kicked against, now they're, they're a pleasure. They're not burdensome anymore. And this is the victory talking about this word overcome, this is the victory that overcomes, that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So what is the victory that that overcomes the world? Well, here it is said to be the new birth. But the new birth gives rise to faith. We saw that here. And faith, therefore, is called the victory that overcomes the world. Who is it that overcomes the world? The one who believes, which means that something in this belief, something in the very nature of this belief has stripped the power of the world by its victory, 
strip the power of the world to make the commandments of God burdensome. And that stripping is also called the love of God. This is why I think at the, at the heart of saving faith is love to God. When, when you are awakened to trust Jesus, to receive Jesus, you receive him as your precious treasure. You receive him as the most valuable reality in the world. And therefore, the keeping of his commandments has been turned into a, a privilege and a pleasure and not some external legalistic burden that you can't stand to do, but you're going to do because you don't want to go to hell. That's not the nature of the argument here. Love to God is a keeping of the commandments in such a way that they're not burdensome. And belief is the victory that turns the burdensome commandment into a not burdensome. And therefore, in the very nature of faith is this valuing of God above everything. One more quick passage to show you this from Philippians 3, 6 to 8. Paul says, As to zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness in the, under the law, I was blameless. Now, that's amazing. There was a kind of law-keeping that Paul performed before his conversion that he regarded as flawless. You're kidding me. But look what he says. But whatever gain I had, whatever gain I had, all that righteousness right there under law, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. He's calling righteousness loss, blameless righteousness loss for the sake of Christ, for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of surpassing worth surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, literally dung. Now, tell me, what kind of righteousness under law that is blameless can be called dung? It's the same kind of, of commandment keeping back here that would have felt burdened. But when you are born again and belief has overcome the world, they are not burdensome anymore. And the change is this. Christ has become your surpassing treasure. So I'm saying that the nature, the nature, the essential nature of love to God, love to Christ is a, a valuing of Christ, a treasuring of Christ above all things. That's what was missing in this righteousness. There is a kind of commandment keeping. This is why I cannot, we must not, identify love to Jesus with commandment keeping. There is a kind of commandment keeping which, which is nothing but dung. And what turns commandment keeping into worship and praise and an honor and makes it part of love to Christ is when Christ now is of a surpassing value to us. That's the essence of loving Christ.